So our study this morning, back in the book of Lamentations, <clears throat> we're looking today at the purpose of Lamentations. And the first thing we'll look at is the uh, historical purpose for Lamentations. Um, God intended, <clears throat> you turn over to Lamentations chapter 1, God intended that Jeremiah express the extreme sorrow that he had over the destruction of Jerusalem. Um, Jeremiah 1, the first two verses, how lonely sits the city that was full of people. She has become like a widow who was once great among the nations. She who was a princess among the provinces has become a forced laborer. She weeps bitterly in the night and her tears are on her cheeks. She has none to comfort her among all her lovers. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. And down to verse 16, for these things, Jeremiah says, I weep. My eyes run down with water because far from me is a comforter, one who restores my soul. My children are desolate because <clears throat> the enemy has prevailed. God intended that Jeremiah, in his words, express his extreme soul. And he does that wonderfully by the picture that he paints for us there. And he also wanted Jeremiah, though, to remind them that he always remains true and faithful to his word. Uh, chapter 2 and verse 17. Maybe I'll, I'll start at the back, Sandra, with you if you've got that. Lamentations 2 and 17. Lamentations 2 and 17. The Lord has done that which he had devised. He has fulfilled his word that he has commanded in the days of old. He has thrown down and has not pitied. And is that pity or pity? Um, and he has caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He has set up the horn of thine adversary. Okay, thank you. Um, God remains true and faithful to his word, doesn't he? And Jeremiah speaks also of his reactions to the lack of the listening ears in Judah. In chapter 13, or in Jeremiah 13, maybe I'll skip over to that quick, I'll skip Lisa for a minute. Chapter 13 and verse 17, we read there, Jeremiah says, but if you will not listen to it, my soul will sob in secret for such pride, and my eyes will bitterly weep and flow down with tears because the flock of the Lord has been taken captive. And we think about that, what Jeremiah is saying there. Um, Jesus spoke in the very same manner, didn't he? Um, concerning his wish wishes for Jerusalem in his day. Uh, Matthew chapter 23 Matthew 23 Lista I'll get you to read uh, verse 30 read a verse each 36 37 and 38 we'll go up to go on. so verse 36 uh, Lista yeah and, Uh, chapter 23, Lisa, sorry, 23, and verse 36. Behold, your houses be left to you desolate. 
Okay. Almost the same thoughts, isn't it, as Jeremiah had. Christ had the same feelings. Um, and we witness his love for his people in uh, Luke chapter 19 and verse 41. We all know this verse. As Jesus approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he wept over it. He wept because he knew uh, what was to happen to them. And their judgment, though, <clears throat> was also, it was their own fault, wasn't it? Jeremiah wept, Christ wept, but it was their own fault. John 5, John chapter 5 and verse 40. Uh, Jeremy, I'll get you to read that. 5 and verse 40. <clears throat> will not come to me that you might have life. Right. The opportunity was there, wasn't it? To come to Christ, but they were unwilling to do that. So Lamentations um, lays out really the horrific, uh, pitiful state of Jerusalem following the siege by the Babylonians. Um, Lamentations chapter 2, verses 9 to 21. Uh, we won't read that now because I, I looked through my notes and we cover a lot of that passage after. So um, for the sake of doing it twice, uh, we'll wait. We'll only need to read it once for the impact of, of what the state of Jerusalem was. Um, you know, when we study that, um, we realize... Jerusalem's physical structure is gone. Her kings and her princesses, um, her prophets, the elders who were leaders in the community, her young women and children, their mothers, the false prophets, and, and finally her enemies. We read of all that. And it clearly, lamentation states um, that this gross scene, and it is, it's pretty gross, uh, scene of destruction is the result of Judah's sins. Uh, in, Lamenta in verse chapter 3 of Lamentations, uh, Naomi, I'll get you to read that. Lamentations 3, verses 37 to 39. Who has spoken and it came to pass, unless the Lord has commanded it? It is not from the mouth of the Most High that good and bad come. Why should a living man complain, a man, about the punishment of his sins? Okay. It was their fault, wasn't it? Clearly. And also, the book provides, though, the captives with the assurance that those who have destroyed Jerusalem, those that were the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, um, they were likewise also going to be punished. And we read that in uh, chapter, same chapter, uh, 60, verses 64, chapter 3, 64 to 66. Jeff, I'll get you to read those, please. <coughs> Repay them, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. Give them a veiled heart your curse be upon them. In your anger, pursue and destroy them from under the heavens of the Lord. Okay, so that's kind of the historical uh, part of Lamentations. Um, we see the destruction. We see that God is just and faithful. We talk about that later on. So we won't go into that too much at the moment. Um, so the next section in our purpose of lamentations is the doctrinal section. Um, Jeremiah had been dwelling on his sorrows um, and the sorrows of, of his people, but then he lifts his eyes up heavenwards and he remembers God's mercy. Um, God is faithful to chasten. Look, turn over to Psalms. Psalms 119, verse 75, is a verse that came to my attention in studying this lesson. 
verse 70, uh, Psalms 119, verse 75, I know, O Lord, that your judgments are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. A lot of people don't want to face the facts of that verse, do they? Or um, even try to understand it. Um, God is faithful in his correction because he loves us. Um, we, we go wayward, we fall into sin, the temptations, we suffer the consequences of it. Um, it's God's purpose that things are carried out that way, that we might learn, uh, and that we might turn from those ways. And so we're, we're asked <clears throat> the question, what important lessons concerning the compassion of God are seen in Lamentations. We'll turn back to chapter 3 of Lamentations and uh, we'll read verses 31 to 33. We'll take a verse each. Mom, you can take 31 and then we'll go over to Will and back to uh, 10. For the Lord will not cast off forever. Nor let his Though he causes grief, yet he will show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, nor take the children of men. Okay. The Lord won't reject forever, will he? He'll have compassion according to his abundant loving kindness. And drop down to uh, verse 55. To 57 and reverse each Sandy you can do 55 and we'll go backwards and cherry 57 Hey, think upon these these verses as we answer this question. In your own words, what what strikes you here about God and and His compassion? Kala? God loves us so much that little we know that how much he loves us. Uh, it's like parents too. Parents love their kids and they want them to do what is right. And please, if only they will do this. If only, and it doesn't take an awful lot. But that what you want them to do is just just a bare minimum to acknowledge that, you know, that this is the right thing to do. And first of all, that they need to respect you. And God is the, I have, you know, teach totally how much patience and long suffering the Lord has. I mean, considering all the things that they have done, Israel have done, and he still is there hanging on to that little, wee little hope, uh, and, and let them know that I love you and I care for you. Only when you can to turn back from your witness. Right. Exactly, exactly. When we learn what true love is from God and His wisdom, we understand this, don't we? You know. Any other thoughts? When you talked about uh, Jeff? Jeremiah, Jeremiah called on the Lord, the Lord was there. Sometimes we just take that for granted that when we decide, well, I realize what I've done is wrong. Mm -hmm. The Lord will hear me. Um, mm. It was the Lord's grace that He hears you. He doesn't have to. But He's immediate in His hearing Jeremiah. Right. Right. And how blessed we are that He even listens to us. Really. You know, when Kala mentioned parents, I think, yeah, as parents we kind of understand um, the thoughts behind these verses 
And I used to, one time I remember saying to my boys that it, it hurts me more to get after you because it does, it's painful, um, you know, and we only learn to overcome that pain and see the need for it by following God's wisdom and, and learning His wisdom. Nowadays, we see it so much with parents, they just let the kids go. Who cares? They'll, you know, they'll live and learn. It's not the right way, is it? Um, and Lamentations teaches us that um, God wants to bring us to the place of repentance and confession. That's what he wants. Sometimes we don't want to go there, do we? It takes a lot of courage. But he wants us to reach that point, not only for um, our salvation, but for our own. Uh, esteem our own thinking if we look at verses 39 to 41 um, <clears throat> we'll see the the reason for being taken to that place uh, Henry do you want to read 39 and then we'll go over to Sandra and Lista chapter 3 why should there be men Okay. Why should we complain of our, the consequences of our sins? You know, instead God wants us to examine and probe them and, and return to Him. That is the purpose. And He wants us to return to Him and... Uh, Jeremy? Oh. And if you look at 1 John... 1 John chapter 1 and verse 19. First, sorry. Or 1 John chapter 1, chapter verse, one. 9. verse 9. Sorry, verse 9. 9, 19. 19. Um, if we confess our sin, if we have the courage and, and uh, repentance within our heart, we confess them, look what God says, He's faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Who was it? Just Kala that just said, what a wonderful God we serve. Amazing, isn't it? Um, his purposes. And true repentance, um, as hard as it is, to reach that point is never without hope. We need to remember that. Look at Psalms 19. Psalm, or Psalms 94, sorry. My voice, it's not messed up, or messed up seems my eyes also. <laughs> Psalms 94, and, and look at verse 14. Uh, Lisa, do you want to read that, please? Psalms 94, and verse 14. Amazing, eh? You know, just amazing. We turn our backs upon him, serve ourselves. Of course, then he won't listen to us. But then when we change our hearts and seek his forgiveness, he's there to forgive us. And so having considered the compassion of God uh, and the strength that we find in that, um, should we set aside the thought of, of, of his wrath? Um, you know, we think about Jeremiah's prophetic voice had offered his people the love of God. Jeremiah reminded them of that, reminded them of God's provisions, reminded them of God's protection, and all this could be theirs if, if they would abandon their idolatry and turn to him again. Um, because, you know, when you think about it, um, we're of different natures, aren't we? Some, are, some of us are quick to respond, 
Some of us are more stubborn to respond. But God uses all of his character attributes to move us. You know, his compassion, his mercy. If it doesn't work, then his wrath. Um, and as we will see in our next question, we just spoke here now of his compassion. But now we're asked, why is it so important <clears throat> to see the description of the outpouring of the wrath of God as presented in Lamentations? We just saw the reason for the importance of his compassion. Now we're asked to see what is the importance of the wrath. And chapter 2, Lamentations 2, we'll read the first uh, six verses, do a verse each, and uh, who read last? Lisa, did you read last? Yeah. Okay, Kala, let's we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, take a verse each. How the Lord has covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud of his anger. He has covered her with his The Lord has swallowed up and has not pitied all the dwelling places of Jacob. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has profaned the kingdom and his princes. He has cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He has drawn back his right hand from, from, from before the enemy. And he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devours round about. He has bent his bow like an enemy, with his right hand set like a foe, and he has killed all who are delightful in our eyes. In the tent of the daughter of Zion, he has poured out his fury like fire. The Lord was like an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her palaces. <coughs> he has destroyed her strongholds and has increased mourning and lamentation in the daughter of Judah. He extends violence to his tabernacle as if it were dark. He has destroyed his place of assembly. The Lord has caused, caused the appointed feast of the Sabbath to be forgotten in Zion. In his burning indignation, he has burned the king and the priest. The Lord. Um, verse seven. No, that was it. Or no, well, yeah. Okay, I'll get you next. Um, pretty powerful picture there. What, in your words, your thoughts, why do you think it's important to see this? Exactly. Um, you know, I was thinking, uh, any other thoughts before I say anything? I was thinking, um, I was reading this, the beginning verses there, how the Lord has uh, covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger. Um, if you remember back uh, when we were studying the book of Kings, um, remember back to the dedication of the temple on Mount Moriah Solomon at the time had ordered the ark uh, of the covenant to be brought from Jerusalem to the finished temple you know, remember that scene of that glory and the scene there in, it was in 1 Kings 8 in verse 10 and 11 maybe I'll just read that quickly 1 Kings chapter 8 verses uh, 10 to 11. It happened 
that when the priests came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. This is probably a scene that we can only witness with our mind's eyes. Um, one of beauty and, and one of God's glory. As that cloud came down, um, Israel would have been reminded of, of, the, of the presence of their benevolent God. Um, and the priests weren't able to carry out their duty be, because of the, the glory of that. But here in Lamentations, um, this cloud is not a comfortable one, is it? I thought of the difference between them. Uh, it didn't come with a gentle descent uh, from heaven. It says there it was cast down from heaven to the earth. It came filled with God's anger. You know, the picture that we see, uh, that cloud that came over the temple was to remind Israel God's with us. Um, you know, their loving God, the one who looked after them. Um, this one came full of anger. This cloud came to destroy um, the beauty of Israel. And we see that God's move from a, a protective God to Israel to a God dealing out severe punishment now. Um, I thought about it. In our study Wednesday night on Acts, uh, one lesson Jeremy was speaking about um, eloquent preachers, men that are uh, with the ability to use words uh, to have you see the scene before you as if you were looking at it and witnessing it. Um, and I thought about that in this lesson. Jeremiah has that ability. Um, you know, he wanted Israel and us. To, to understand that God is, is not soft or, or wimpy on sin, as Kyle has said. Um, you know, Israel trusted in their, the magnificence of their temple to be their salvation, no matter what their hearts were like. And God proved them wrong, didn't he? So terribly wrong. Um, and, you know, as Colin made a statement there, reminded us, um, there's lessons here for us to take to heart because Israel, the time had expired for, for their sinfulness. Um, someday we're going to hear that trumpet, aren't we? You know, we're going to see the Lord in the, in the clouds, the one who died for our sins. And then that will be the end. We, we don't want to be in the position that Judah is in here. Um, you know, it won't be 70 years of captivity. It, it will be eternity. Um, and that's why these lessons are, are so good for us to, to take to heart. And so we move there then um, to, to the purpose of Jesus Christ in uh, Lamentations. Um, the tragic reality of Lamentations is, is that the nation through whom the Savior of the world was to come. If you look back at Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 23. Um, did we end? Who did we end up with? Oh, right, well. Okay, yeah, will you read both those verses, Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6, please. Bear with me a second. Uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Okay, is it, is it verse one? Um, 5 and 6, chapter 23, 5 and 6. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper, and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell safely. Now the 
this is his name by which he will be called the Lord of Righteousness. Uh, the Savior was going to come through the nation of, of Judah, wasn't it? But sadly to say, this nation became thoroughly corrupt to the point of in, inviting wrath and the destruction uh, upon themselves from their God. And yet the hope of salvation for all mankind wasn't lost. Uh, we go back to Lamentations. Uh, chapter 3. Lamentations 3. And Tim, I'll get you to read verses 25 and 26. The law is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Okay, we see God's faithfulness, don't we? Um, and his trueness to, to what he says. Even though Ju Judah, Jerusalem's destroyed, Judah's going into captivity, yet his plan was the Savior of the world was going to come through that nation, and he saw that through. His words are, are true and, and faithful to that. And so that ends our look at the purpose. And he, other comments. Um, we now move into uh, the content of Lamentations. And we, we first look here at the poetical structure of, of Lamentations. Um, if you remember our study of the Song of Solomon, yes, we said it was a book, uh, the book of the Song of Solomon, but it was essentially a, a love song. Uh, it was a, a lyrical poem. Well, Lamentations is the same. We call it a book, but it's, it's a literary structure. It's, it's actually that of a poem, or a, I think it's pronounced dirge, uh, a dirge, which is a funeral song uh, or a funeral hymn. It's, it's a slow, mournful piece of music. And Lamentations... Well, it's a series of uh, five laments. Jeremiah set it up that way. It's a series of five laments over the fall of Jerusalem. And it's written the same way that a, a funeral poem or a funeral song would be written and recited upon the death of an in individual. If you look back at uh, 2 Samuel, um, 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 17 to 27. I'll, I'll read this quickly. <clears throat> this is David's lament. Remember the mournful state of mind that David was in over Saul and Jonathan. Uh, David says, Then David chanted with this lament over Saul and Jonathan his son. And he told them to teach the sons of Judah, the song of the bull. Behold, it is written in the book of Jashar, Your beauty, O Israel, is slain on your high places. How have the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exalt. O mountains of Gilbo, let, no, let not dew or rain be on you, nor fields of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and pleasant in their life, and in their death, they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you luxuriously in scarlet, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. 
How have the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? Jonathan is slain on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was more wonderful than the love of women. How have the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? Um, that was David's lament for Saul and Jonathan. And, and he wrote that in order to convey the, the feelings of deep sadness and uh, the profound sense of loss that was experienced by him. And Jeremiah is the same way. Um, and sometimes those deep sad feelings paint profound pictures on our minds. Not sometimes they should. Um, and so with that in mind, um, we'll end there, because the second bell is going to go. And uh, next week we'll begin with the, uh, the condition of Jerusalem in her conquered state.